All right, so the circuit that we are looking at is this one. So we have again a resistor and J to ohm as inductance, the inductive reactance and the capacitive reactance as minus J to ohm. We have two voltage sources having uh, phase phase angles of zeros and the amplitude of 20 and 10. We have to perform the transit analysis. So let's build that circuit first. So let me. So we have one resistor. So I'll instantiate with I and then analog and then resistor. So I'll bring the resistor in here. And then we have an inductor, instantiate an inductor, rotate with R and then this and then instantiate a capacitor and rotate with R. Okay, and then we have two voltage sources. So I'll instantiate V sign. And, and the V sign here. And I'll instantiate the ground. I'll wire the circuit. Okay, so to calculate the uh, the J to ohm, uh, the inductance value from it, we know that F is equal to, so I'm assuming, so again, this, this thing is very important. When we are doing the, the phaser analysis for this circuit, when we are doing the analysis on paper, analytical solution, then the frequency is not important. Uh, we can do, we can solve everything without the frequency for this particular question also. But when we are doing the simulation, we need to assume some frequency. So uh, that's that's important. So I'm assuming for this particular problem, is assuming one kilohertz uh, as a frequency. We can choose also other frequencies because uh, our, uh, our impedances, they are dependent upon the frequency. So if the, fre if the frequency changes, then the impedance changes and accordingly, uh, the source, uh, the source uh, frequency changes, so the results remains the same. So that's not that's not important. But we have to choose some frequency to begin with. People also take omega is equal to one radians per second, and which is like 0 0.15, one zero point two hertz or something. I'm choosing f is equal to one kilohertz. So we have frequency of one kilohertz. Then we can calculate omega uh, as 6.28 k, and then ZL. Uh, which is the inductive reactance is J to omega, which is J omega. So we can find the inductance as 0 0.318 millihenry. I'll go click this Q, uh, 0 0.318 millihenry. Similarly, for the capacitance is 79.6 microfarad. I'll say 79.6 microfarad. And resistance is to ohm Q. To ohm. Oh, something happened. Yes. 79.6 microfarad. Okay. And this is 20 amplitude Q. Initial phase for sinusoid is zero, amplitude is 20. Frequency is 1K. Here Q, amplitude is 10. Frequency is 1K. Okay, all set. Uh, 
check and check and save okay no error okay we will launch adxl create a new view sorry before that let me label labeling is very important i don't know keep on forgetting that so label i'll say v vs1 this is the voltage supply one and uh, i'll label as v s2 as voltage supply 2 and i'll uh, label the middle one node as uh, b rlc okay no other nodes remains uh, now check and save again now launch adxl create a new view mm, yes tests okay set up the environment as 64 bit choose the analysis as transient one kilohertz is a large frequency so i'll uh, i'm taking stop time to be i don't know 100 milliseconds okay and sorry 100 milliseconds and the conservative okay and then go to the outputs save all need all need all and the probe level is three okay now we can close and we can run the simulation okay done we can right click and we can say direct plot the transient signals and the transient signal i'll focus on the on the source so i'll say vs1 taking this current i'll escape So this gives us the the voltage and current of the of the source. <clears throat> now until that point everything is fine. We've been doing it, right? Uh, it's nothing new with uh, what we have done so far. But the next thing now to to find out the power of the system. This is something new where we we are now introducing you the for you guys the calculator where we write the expressions and then we import them to the buffer uh, we bring it to the adx environment and then execute and evaluate those things so i'll keep that plot here i'll go back to the to the virtuoso as to the cadence environment i'll go to the adxl in adxl i'll go to the tools tools calculator okay so that's my calculator. In calculator, I'll tell uh, that I, I, I mean what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the instantaneous power. So right now I'm looking for the instantaneous power. And when we're talking about the instantaneous power again to the plot. So when I'm talking about when I'm talking about the instantaneous power, what I'm saying that we have a voltage signal of the power supply and the current signal both. Instantaneous power means that at every moment, at every time sec a point, uh, the the power is calculated. Uh, the the whatever is the voltage of V and whatever is the vo uh, is the value of current during that time, they both get multiplied. For example, at this point, both of them will be multiplied and the power signal will be drawn. Similarly, at each and every point, so the instant power instant means is calculated at every instant every given instance so that's why in the end what we are going to get for the instantaneous power is a sinusoidal signal <clears throat> because it will be based on the two voltage uh, and current signals which are also sinusoidal and when we talk about the average power it is actually the average of all the powers you know the all the pluses and minuses uh, and we, uh, we average out the signal the whole signal through throughout the cycle so that was important
to mention this. It was important to mention this. Now, but let me bring the calculator. So in the calculator, I'll say that bring me the IT. So the, the current IT, which IT I want? I want this IT. Okay, when I click this one, and I go back to the calculator, so here's the calculator, I see that uh, my IT has been written here. You know, IT. so I'll, I'll delete this one. And I'm just deleting it because uh, uh, just in the beginning, I explained that we'll stick to the, the convention that all, we'll always uh, use one way of uh, representing the current. So I'm representing all the currents towards the plus side. So when I say this one, it is going into the component. When I'll select this one, this will be going into the component. So I'm choosing this side. Okay. I cannot see. Let me again close it. This is because I could not see. Let me go to ADXL again, tools, calculator. Okay. So I'm saying bring me IT. And for IT, I'll bring this one. And then I can go to the calculator here. I see that ITV0 plus is there. Uh, now what we need to do, we have to multiply the voltage signal. So I'll go, I'll go here, I'll say uh, multiply with VT. VT uh, will be the voltage time-based voltage signal that's general expression. And I have the parenthesis started and then I have slash, so slash V0 will write the net name, which is VS1. And uh, they should be in the inverted commas. Yes. Okay. Once I've written this, that expression, if it is wrong, of course, I'll get an error if I've um, skipped something. So I have that expression. Once that expression is written, I'll, I'll go with this, this, you know, um, kind of gear sign. And it says that send buffer expression to ADE outputs. Okay. So I'll click that one. So th this statement is very important. Send buffer expression to ADE outputs. And this is where you need a screenshot for, for your lab report, okay? So I'm clicking that, and I'll go back to ADXL. In ADXL, we have result and the output setup, two things. And the instruction read that send it to the outputs, right? Again, it says that send buffer expression to AD outputs. So these are the outputs. So I'll go and click here, and I see that my expression has been moved here. Here's my expression. It has already moved. The, the one I wrote in calculator has been moved here. I'm going to name it. I'll double click this and I'm going to call it as uh, instantaneous uh, power of voltage supply one. Okay. I'll just name it such. Okay. Once that is done in output setup, I'll go back to results. Okay, I've just named. So I came here to see to show you guys that it has moved here, and also to name it. All right. Once that is done, I'll go back again to the results. In the results, I don't have to rerun the simulation. All I will do, all I have to do is to hit that reevaluate. So I'll hit the reevaluate result, and I see that instantaneous power VS1 and plot has been already plotted. Uh, I mean, it's not plotted. Uh, the system has calculated its values and it, it has given us a signal. So what I'll do, I'll right click. Wait, wait, wait. So this is important because I have already, I already have the voltage and uh, current signal. So I'll change it to append. So I would like to plot the power signal on top of them. So I'll right click and then I'll say plot with the append. Then I'll go to here. So that's my, my power. So the, the red one is now my instantaneous power for this, uh, this voltage supply. All right. So now 
we, we have we have now calculated so that's the power signal across the whole cycle all right now now what now i would like to calculate the average power because as as the instruction says that for this uh, voltage supply we have we have to have this 50 watts of supply which is being supplied by this power supply 50 watts so now comes the next thing so if i want to take an average of the system and what happens that in the beginning we have the transients you see we have the voltage and current transients and the system has not stabilized until it reaches you know some it passed few waves so what i will do i'll find the average so first of all i'll just find an average by considering all the all the time scale so we simulated this for 100 milliseconds so we'll take an average of the signals for whole for the whole 100 milliseconds then later we what we'll do we'll try to take the waveforms when it has already stabilized we'll just for example i don't know i'll start at 10 milliseconds for example we'll start from 10 until 100 uh, uh until 100 milliseconds so that's what we will try to do Be because we have simulated for we simulated this one for 100 milliseconds okay let's go to the to the calculator again so here we are is the calculator this is the expression that we wrote already now all i have to do is to look for the functions so if if some of you guys are not uh, able to see when they're you know when when you guys are doing these circuits and you don't see all these things please select it from this drop down menu there are some favorites math modifier so try to click all so that all of them are visible now i'll look for the average here so when i find the function average all i have to do is to click average and it takes the average of the whole system all right once this is done again i'll say send it to buffer of ade go to the outputs and you see it is already there now i'll call it as average power vs1 okay go to the results and then hit the reevaluate button and actually this is what you get minus 49.46 okay so minus 50 watt is the power being supplied by the power supply minus so it, but this one again as i was saying this is taking into the consideration the whole whole sinusoidal wave starting from zero until the last one but if this is not what we want then we can do something else clip the sine wave so again i'll go to the calculator okay now i have already calculated i have already uh, this is the instantaneous power right this expression shows us the instantaneous power and i have already uh, calculated the instantaneous power and i have already named it as instantaneous power vs1 so what i can do actually i can do this thing i can say clip let's see the clippers see okay i'll say clip clip which signal clip instantaneous or if i see the name of the signal here I'll, I'll click it otherwise no i don't say i'll write the name as it is uh, instantaneous underscore power underscore vs1 so clip my signal starting 10 milliseconds up to 100 milliseconds it means that it will only take uh the the time frame the time window from 10 milliseconds to 100 milliseconds or it is going to integrate our signal within these time moments it is going to leave the first 10 milliseconds because they were quite unstable once that is done i'll say okay and i see that the clip clipping of the instantaneous power vs1 uh, has been done here now once it is clipped now i would like to take the average my average will definitely not be this one because I've clipped the signals where there was too many transients. Once that is done, I'll say send it to buffer, close, go to output setups, and now I'll call it average underscore power underscore VS1. I'll call it clip just so that I know how did I name it. 
Okay. Again, I'll go to the results. I'll reevaluate. And I see that my new power is 49.3 watt, which is, again, so close to 50 watts, but uh, whatever we are looking for. So that's the way of using the calculator, very useful. Now, next time you want to do anything with any of these signals, all you have to do is to use their names. That's why naming is very much important in the process so that you, are, you, you don't have to refer to the, to, the, uh, to the, sorry, you don't have to refer to the whole expression again and again. Now let's do one more thing. I mean, there's one more way. Let me just uh, quickly show you guys uh, where is the signal here just for okay so I, what I'll do I'll just take it um, so I, I've, I've already made a mistake uh, in a way I mean that if I'm if I uh, in during the explanation in the first couple of minutes so when we are taking a convention so I would always take my uh, you know the left left point uh, for the current. So I'm assuming that my I'll choose this one so that I'm assuming that the current is moving in this direction and then this one the, so that the current is moving in this direction and then this one so that the current is moving in this direction and this terminal so that the current is moving in this direction. And why I would actually do that, the second thing is uh, based on this mesh currents that I've chosen. So the current is moving from minus to plus and this one and this, it's the same uh, mesh circuit analysis that we have done okay so but when i chose the current i think i, I chose this one but uh, the the concept is important uh, so please try to uh, leave that thing so I, what i was doing earlier was okay that i have to choose this current uh, signal so that we have to satisfy this mesh current the loop current flowing uh, so that's one thing and now what I'm going to do, I'll, uh, there's another way of uh, introducing an expression. So let me again go to the ADX. So, so imagine that I would like to I would like to take the current of the of the resistor. So I'm I'm looking to put the current of resistor within the plot. So what I will do, first of all. I can I can go I can click here so instead of putting the things on a calculator first and then sending it to the buffer there's one more way so I'll go to the calculator within the calculator I'll say bring me the the let me bring the voltage of uh, the resistor voltage so I'll say sorry so let me bring the current so this is the current of the resistor okay so i brought this one here vrlc is the voltage okay and then multiplied by vrlc oh sorry too easy right vt uh columns and then slash sorry slash vrlc Okay, I've written that expression. Perfect. Now I'm not sending into the buffer. I'm just telling you the ways. I mean, there's, there are more ways to do it. And then the expression has been written here. I'll go to ADXL. I'll go here and I'll say here. So write me, give me an expression. Okay, I've clicked this one and I said that give me an expression. So expression from where? So I'll I'll just hit the, it means that open calculator, it means that paste calculator buffer. So I'll just click this one and this is going to paste the calculator buffer. So whatever we've written, VRLC has now moved here. So this one was uh, um, instantaneous power of VRLC. Okay, and then again, go to the results and then we say reevaluate. And we have the the power signal of the append. Okay, I'll say instead of append, I'll go to new window, and I'll plot the signal. Okay, here's the power signal. Okay, 
So there was another way. I mean, if you are if, if you have certain formula written uh, within the calculator, then you can actually import them from here by in the, within the expression. So that expression is here in the output setup. Okay, you can also do that. And that was a that was a signal. So you can either import an expression like here, or you can import a signal. So I'll say that import a signal. Okay, which signal? Now I can so signal from so here select from schematic. I'll go. I'll select from schematic. What signal? The voltage signal. Okay, and I'll go to reevaluate, and now I have the voltage signal VRLC here. So I'll say append and then plot here's the voltage signal so we we have the instantaneous power and we have the voltage signal okay just look at this i mean so this these are the two ways so i can also go to the output setup the two things that i've additionally told you is are about this thing so i can go to the expression and i can import an expression and i can say just take a signal all the system says okay signal what signal do you want and I'll double click here and I'll say from the schematic, just select from the schematic. And then I can bring any uh, signal from the schematic. I can always name them and then go to the results, evaluate them and get the outputs. That's, that's all about uh, the, the lab today. That's what you guys will be doing 